Print Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada helps you. Yes, you find the things on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week? Okay, so this week I've been looking to experiment with a little bit RS-232. Um, just go to the computer and chat about it. So RS-232 is like, before USB, we had these computer ports. They were either 25 pin or nine pin connectors on the back, and you would use them to connect mice or even printers or um, accessories or your Palm Pilot 5. Um, if you wanted to like sync data between your computer and your Palm Pilot. Um, these were slower than USB and you know only sent data in, in raw 8-bit uh, packets um, or even 7-bit or modems also use them historically don't really appear on computers anymore except sometimes you know you actually still can you still can get computers that have serial ports because there's actually still some old equipment um i've definitely seen like barcode scanners and scales and like lab equipment and stuff that still has rs-232 um like i said it's definitely older but it's you know it was on every computer um one of the first microcontroller boards i designed you know again before usb usb wasn't on computers yet to program the bootloader on the ATtiny 2313, you would use a serial port. So um, the serial port and a serial converter, because RS-232 voltages were, they weren't zero to three volts. It was negative 10 to positive 10. Although that was, it actually was, the, the history just was a little bit um, flexible. It didn't have to be plus minus 10, which like I realized later, as long as it was like, plus or minus three, but it definitely, or like five, it definitely had to be like plus or minus five and, and like ground was like the crossing point. So it definitely had to go above and below. Um, so to you do that, you needed a, a chip. And so in my case, you know, the one that we all used was the Max 232 classic dip chip. You needed four capacitors because you needed um, whatever the input power supply. So here there's actually a five volt, a nine to five volt power supply. You need a capacitor on the input, five volts, and then you need another capacitor to double the voltage because you would use it as a charge pump. You would like flip the voltage back and forth um, to double it. So that would get you from five to 10 volts. And then you would have a um, inverter. So then you would have um, something that would take the 10 volts and convert it to negative 10 volts. And that's another capacitor. And then I think the third one is, I don't remember some, you know, maybe the regulator for the for the chip itself. Um, yeah, and I like a little Java applet. This was very 90s. Um, anyways, so l thankfully these days we have chips like the RP2040 that have built in USB, built in USB bootloaders. It's, it's like a magical time, believe me. Um, but there's still a lot of times where you're dealing with retro technology. Like I said, there's still plenty of in industrial equipment that uses RS-232. I still see it. And you can still buy computers that have hardware com ports, um, absolutely for sure. So let's go to DigiKey and let's look at the Max 232. So this is an older chip, but let's say we wanted to buy it, you know, nowadays. Can you still buy it? Heck yeah, still stock the DigiKey, even in DIP format. So this is a transceiver with two, it's full duplex, which means it has RX and TX 22, which means two transmit, two receive. Um, I think for, if I remember correctly, I think on the Atmax and definitely on chips like the original Arduino, which also had serial, they use the DTR pin to do an auto reset. And that's kind of the magic, right? You would, you would when you wanted to um, upload, you'd connect the serial port. When you opened it, the DTR pin would toggle because it's the like pin that indicates, hey, the serial port's open. And that would just immediately reset it and then the bootloader would run for three seconds and then you'd upload. So I believe the Atmex, I think I did the same thing. Um, but it was, I think it was pre-Arduino. Arduino didn't exist at the time. Although I, it's been a while. Um, so uh, RS-232 transceiver. But the one thing that's a little annoying about this is um, one, it was limited. Uh, 100, you know, it could do 115 uh kilobit per second that's why it's data rated for 120 because it's like a little bit over 115 um but there's times when you want to maybe communicate at 250 that's not unusual um so get one that can do 250 230 250. second 
this one has a voltage supply of five volts because at the time uh people didn't really use well there were three volt microcontrollers but like a lot of people still ran them at five so um this chip was at five but let's look for something that's service mount not through a hole can run at three volts as well as five volts um and maybe can go a little bit faster than 120. so to save us a little time let's just uh click on some of these to get us kind of fast track us to the um to the search we want because we definitely want transceivers that do rs232 um the history says i don't really care and the data rate will set and then the package in the case will we'll do later okay so we're here and already we've kind of like fast traveled um so let's look for surface mount because like i said you know it's gonna be pick and placed number of drivers and transceivers so again a really common one is two two because you get like the dtr pin or cs cts rts so it's flow control plus rxtx um and then let's look at the voltage supply so this one looks like it'll cover i want to make sure it covers three volts and five volts so i'm just going to like pick through and i'm control clicking i'm going to skip this because it's going to have five grab these and then these are all higher than five so let's uh let's select these let's like i said you know i want the higher data rate so we'll skip the 120 kilobits and let's only look for ones that are in stock and uh can skip the marketplace ones too okay so let's see what we got um so not too surprising yeah there's the max 232 so what did they come out with the max 3 232 which is three volt compatible um so that's actually i think what i used on this design which is you know a, a tiny cute yeah the 320 32 32 starts with Max because originally it was made by Maxim, now analog devices, but to be honest, it's a jelly bean part. Um, you'll find many two, three, two, three, two. So TI has the TRS 3232. Um, there's, there's the TI Max 3232 and then Max Linear makes the SP, you know, whatever. There's tons. Um, all are good. They're all going to be equivalent. Um, you still need those capacitors. Um, there was actually a version of the Max 232, I think it was the Max 233, that had the capacitors built in. Um, but it was like very expensive. It was very cool though, because it was like the capacitors were in the package soldered in. Um, so it saved you a lot of board space. But like I said, it was it was significantly more expensive. It was like two or three bucks compared to the 40 cents you see here. Okay, so the only thing is for my bigger version like if you're connecting to um equipment you you may need to have the ring indicator you might need to have rts cts dsr dtr for data ready and also i actually rather like um the invalid and off pin so these are pins that let you know when something's plugged in on the other side so it's kind of like a link connection indicator um so it is kind of nice that these are little extras that they added to uh chips later the um 232 and 323 do not have the, those extras okay so let's um let's get rid of the numbers and receivers and drivers so um if you are if you do want to have like the full all de9 so the de9 has nine pins so the nine and de9 but um one pin is ground oh and there's also the um earth and ground so you actually have eight pins and then five of them are transmitters and three of them are receivers so it's not like four four it's actually three five i'm going to grab both the five three and three five because of course you can have them go either way i think it's i think it's just a typo um and i still have the high data rate and we'll still get the um the voltage is available so um also a lot of options here yeah i don't see anything else to filter i mean you can do some operating temperature stuff um the max 3243 so you can see they're all kind of have the twos and the threes in there um this one looks really popular there's quite a few of them 238 let's start by price so you know it's interesting for not much more than the two pin version you can actually get a um 
sorry, the two two transceiver, you can get a full three five transceiver in in TSSOP with you know wide operating temperature range. Oops, this is weird. Oh, no, let's. I didn't think to click on the data sheet. Let's just um, let's just Google for it and see what we can get. There you go. Okay. Um, love this rendering. Uh, old style, but yeah, this is this has the extra pins online, which is same as like it'll let you know when the other side is connected. Shut down, which lets you shut down the chip for low power usage. Um, or if you just want to high Z all the pins. And uh, like I said, you just need a couple capacitors, can run it from three to five volts, four caps to generate the positive and negative voltages, and you're good to go. This is, you know, five inputs, three outputs. Yeah, five RS232 inputs, three outputs, and then the four capacitors. And then, you know, the optional shutdown online and status. There's also this uh, R2 out, which is interesting. So it's a before the shutdown capability, you can always monitor the ring input, which will let you know, um, even if it's shut down, if, some, if something is ringing you, so you can like wake up the modem um, or wake up your micro, your computer when the modem rings. I know it's like, it's all very, it's like, it's, it's funny to look at USB serial converters and be like, wow, the DCD pin is still there, even though like, it's not, it's a weird thing to have a USB device do. Anyways, um, this is in stock under a buck uh, and you get all your transceivers. So, you know, basically this is the chip I'm using here. They're all the same pinout. So, you know, anything with the 3243 SP TRS max, you're good to go. Um, and like this, no matter what, how many connections you need for your RS-232 device, this will get you going with three or five volt logic compatibility. So this is my pick. It's a great search. And that's the great search. Where?